Welcome to Digital Asset News, like the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets. I'm bringing on a bite-sized pieces today. Interesting stuff. First up, Ledger wants to help MicroStrategy secure its 400 million Bitcoin treasury. And what this means is that Ledger is going into the institutional vault business also. Bitcoin decouples from legacy markets as breathtaking rally predicted. And what we're going to take a look at is some analysis from Kraken and how this is all going to shape up as far as the traditional market and cryptocurrency and digital assets. Also on a cautionary tale, a blue cartoon shilled Wi-Fi that made a million dollars and vanished. And this is a great example of why you shouldn't go chasing shiny objects. And we'll go over a cue of the day where the question is, how can someone buy Celsius if they're in the United States? And we'll take a look at today's market. Before we do that, I want to say congratulations to Eric Hoover for grabbing the Kobo wallet plus the $150 Unstoppable Domain credit. So Eric, congratulations. One of the reps from Unstoppable Domain is going to be reaching out to you to give you that credit and also to set up the delivery of your Kobo wallet. So before we get into all the stories, let's take a look what's going on in the market. So today it is October 13th, around 2 p.m. Texas time, looking good. So what do we got today? Bitcoin, tumble a little bit, 11.4, but only down 1.3%, but still up 5% for the week. Ethereum also down 2% roughly at 378. And hey, I'll take those numbers. Tether's Tether and XRP's XRP. Bitcoin Cash 4.3% and 13% for the week. Looking good. Congratulations to all you Bitcoin Cash holders. Looks like you may be in the money. Binance Coin up 0.1%, but also 8% for the week. So not too shabby. Chainlink almost hitting that $11 mark, but it's down 5 almost 6% for the 24 hour time frame. Hopefully, it can rebound a little bit more. Polka dot down. It looks like everything's down for a little bit. Uh, Crypto.com 4.8. USD coin. Ah, USD coin, stable coin. Uh, Monero is down. Everything's down. Okay, B, Stellar. Da, 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 da. So, this not a great day. A little bit of red, but not too massive like we are used to in this space. So, uh, we'll see how it rebounds. Let's uh, break into today's top stories. First up, Ledger wants to help MicroStrategy secure its 400 million Bitcoin treasury. So what's going on here? So Ledger is mostly known for its consumer-facing hardware wallets, but since last year, a number of enterprises have also begun to use Ledger Vault. According to the company's vice president of product, Jean-Michel Pelhon, I think I nailed that name. So what's going on here is Nano Ledger, which everybody is used to by now, I think. Most people are. If you don't have one, you want to store one, there's one. Uh, there's a link in the description. But this is what we're used to uh, for the retail side. Nice little cold storage wallet. Very small, almost like a data stick. And, uh, you know, I've got like four of these things uh, for all my different cryptocurrency, and it works great. But that's just for the retail side. But they also have another product called Ledger Vault, which I was not familiar with. And apparently that is for big players in the space, uh, institutional investors, big, large money, uh, so they can actually store their cryptocurrency and digital assets. So who is this good for? Well, it's good for somebody like MicroStrategy, who just bought almost half a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. So there is that portion of it. And then the article goes on to state that more recently, Square, who just acquired 50 million worth of Bitcoin, has developed an in-house open source sub-zero framework to secure its assets. And that's what's great about being Square. Uh, they are a tech company, so they can do these types of things. They can create them to store their digital assets. But if you're looking for something a little bit more out of the box type thing, this is what Ledger is obviously doing for the big money players. So Ledger will set these up for you or its clients, and that they don't necessarily need to know how it works, they just need to know or use the solution. So the VP of operations uh, did a walkthrough of onboarding a company like MicroStrategy. He said that one of the first steps would be to decide how many people will be involved in authorizing transactions. A typical setup would require two of three signatures, where perhaps the CEO, CFO, and general counsel all hold one signature each, which I think is pretty cool, because that way there's no one point of failure you have multiple people who have to sign the transaction. If they do not sign the transaction, then of course, uh, the cryptocurrency goes absolutely nowhere. And there's an even a way to stop everything altogether. I think the coolest thing also is that parts of the private keys can be stored in several physical vaults, or I'll just say in one place. So you can have them spread out multiple places. And of course, you have to bring them all together to have your private keys. So this is how they do it. When a company officer wants to initiate a transaction, he would log into Ledger Vault and input the desired transaction. Then a notification will be sent to all three signatories to approve it. 
they would have to log in and connect their Ledger Blue hard wallet to their computer. Finally, they would enter the unique Ledger Blue pin to sign the transaction, which I have to tell you, if you are somebody who is uh, in the uh, business, the nefarious business, kidnapping people, extortion, whatever you want to call it, uh, these people that have all these keys, now they're targets. And it almost sounds like a like a bad James Bond movie, you know? You got to collect these three people just to get all the money. But I, I mean, seriously aside, though, um, I do think it's a very safe way to do things. Again, ins instead of having one point of failure, you could have three, five, ten, however long, however many uh, you actually wanted to. And they could all be uh, signees, especially for very large transactions like what you have here with MicroStrategy and, you know, also even with Square. So Ledger provides the back end and takes care of the uh, infrastructure and the clients act as their own custodian. This may present a problem as some companies may be required by law to use a regulated custodian. The VP says, if you need a regulated custodian, you can always ask a regulated entity to become one of the signees in the transaction process. And that's actually a pretty good thing because you have to have some kind of custodian. I know people don't like regulation or for people to get involved, but in all honesty, uh, this is the problem. This is one of the problems with cryptocurrency is that uh, it was in Canada, I think it was Quadrica, Quadrica CX, BX, something like that. One of those exchanges, it was the CEO or the owner had the only set of private keys kept in his vault or somewhere. And he took a trip to India and he died, allegedly. Um, so all the money that they had in this exchange just poof, disappeared because that's uh, where they had it, which was just on one person, which is almost ridiculous if you think about it. So in this type of thing in, in the U.S., they say, hey, you can't do it. I don't know about how it's in other countries, but in the U.S., you have to have a regulated custodian, somebody who can oversee the whole process. And it's not just one point of failure, just one person, because can you imagine just uh, losing like, uh, you know, MicroStrategy says, oh, you know what? We just misplaced the key. We uh we had this card for our private keys and we just misplaced it or it got wet. And now we can't read the words. So you're going to need some high grade infrastructure. Uh, and this vault sounds like it could be uh, a good one. So the whole point here is that Ledger is not just in the retail space. They are getting into the bigger players of the game. And I think it speaks volumes about where this industry where this space is actually going to. Now there are so many different institutional players and big money coming in that we see companies that were just for retail branching off and going, you know what, we can service these types of people because you know we have the ability to do so. And there's so many of them coming in, then we have a new business model. So if you're looking at what smart money is doing, well, obviously it's getting cryptocurrency digital assets so much so that it is creating a subsector uh, for custodianship of large amounts of digital assets. And that's the main point that I got from this article, that there's just so much going on that it's going to lead to all these different advancements. So let me just think in the comments section. Let's move on. Next up, Bitcoin decouples from legacy markets as breathtaking rally predicted. This is all about Kraken. So there was a report by Kraken which identified signs the correlation between Bitcoin and the dollar and legacy markets is continuing to weaken. The report attributes Bitcoin's dollar divergence to the U.S. Federal Reserve's plan to maintain 0% interest rates until at least 2023. And that's the thing. Essentially, the Fed pretty much just threw up its hands and said, you know what, we're going to print so much money. Uh, we're not going to have any kind of growth. So to uh, not have everything collapse, we're just going to do interest rates uh, for quite some time, at least for three years. And then we'll take a look at it later. Now, I don't know what's going to happen uh, in the in the future, no one has a crystal ball, but I can give you an educated guess. With the presidential election coming up, I do see a uh, dip coming, especially with uncertainty about who is going to take the office. I think if it is uh, Donald Trump, if he does win, you'll see a little bit of a pump, but the market overall will just start to take either a moderate or a massive dip. And I'm, I'm talking about the traditional market because when you take a look, I don't know what city you're in, but if you take a look around, have you seen small businesses close? Do you have friends or maybe even yourself who says, boy, I really wish there was this, a stimulus package that could come in because either I've gotten laid off or I'm not making as much as I used to. And just basic economic turmoil all over the place. I just don't see very positive things over the next uh, six months or so. I think it's going to be uh, quite a bumpy ride. I don't know what's going to happen with the cryptocurrency market, but for the stock market, I just don't see how that can be propped up for uh, any long length of time. Now remember, 
The economy is not the stock market and the stock market is not the economy, but you can only take a hit to the economy for so much. You can only print so much money and you can only lose so many businesses before everything gets affected. And I think that's going to happen in the near term. I think the best case scenario would be that we just trade sideways for a little bit. That's what it talks about here. The report notes that correlation between Bitcoin and the dollar would uh, later increase as both markets experienced sideways consolidation. So hopefully that's our best case scenario. Looking forward, Kraken anticipates Bitcoin will post a stronger performance in October than in September, which would be nice. The report predicts October will drive an 11% gain, suggesting Bitcoin will close the month at 11,850. So if it does, fantastic. And if it doesn't, well, another buying opportunity for us until the big parabolic bull run hits which I certainly do believe it'll be in 2021, maybe towards the end, but um, I think it could definitely happen. And then to finish up, former hedge fund manager Raul, Raul Powell recently revealed he has shifted more than half of his personal investment portfolio into Bitcoin in anticipation of massive institutional adoption. Which you don't know Raul Powell, he's not just a hedge fund manager, he was also the uh, VP of operations in Europe for Goldman Sachs. And uh, retired around in his early 30s, so uh, no slouch into what is going on into the um, uh, markets, especially in the global economy. So if he took uh, most of his positions and put it into half of Bitcoin, that's a uh, pretty good indicator. And then lastly, this is from actually Nuggets News. He states, publicly traded companies and legendary investors are singing from the rooftops about this new asset class at a time when there's record money sitting in bank accounts looking to find a home. That's a great point, actually. And that's exactly how uh, MicroStrategy uh, and Square got in, more into Bitcoin is they said, hey, our uh, money's on fire. The um, inflation rate is 2% and it's probably going to go up because we have those quantitative easing. So let's put it into something that is not easing, but is hardening. And that is Bitcoin, digital assets, and cryptocurrency. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. Next up, I love these stories. I love these stories that, that give caution. This is a uh, blue cartoon shilled Wi-Fi and made a million dollars and vanished. So when I first saw the title, I'm like, that's pretty interesting. I'd take that to check that out. So this is what the story is all about. The blue Kirby Twitter account, which I had no idea that it existed, which was a briefly popular member of the Ethereum community, has vanished after pulling a $1 million exit scam from the Wi-Fi token other decentralized finance enterprises. Blue Kirby built up a substantial Twitter following and he had a rise to prominence, came on the back of a DeFi token that skyrocketed in value. Does that sound familiar? And yet, after a mishap that lost a bunch of people, millions of dollars in tokens, the tide of popularity turned against him and he promptly disappeared. Well, that only makes sense, right? I mean, you you shill out something, you're like, it's the greatest thing ever, and then put all your money into it, and then people do that, and they're like, see ya. And then, of course, what happened? Where's the guy? Well, of course he left, because he made his money. So here's how it all began. Uh, this guy Kirby, or lady, I don't know who it is, used memes and a perpetually bullish attitude to promote a rising DeFi token called Wi-Fi. The token was one of the first to popularize a concept known as yield farming, where token holders are rewarded for providing liquidity. So just real quick, this is how it all works. Uh, banks, let's, uh, let's take banks as an example. You can't have a bank without having liquidity. And what is liquidity? Cash. So if you open a bank with no cash, it doesn't really work too well. Although uh, banks don't really have that much cash on hand, deal in a digital ledger, just a bunch of zeros and ones, and that's pretty much about it. However, they need liquidity. And the same thing happens on these exchanges, on these on these decentralized exchanges. They need liquidity as well. So what do they do? Hey, if you give us Ethereum or whatever you want to give us, uh, we're going to give you a governance token called Tomato Coin or whatever. And with Tomato Coin, uh, it's a governance token. It's not worth much now, but it could be worth like a dollar, maybe eight, maybe a thousand. We don't know. And the problem was, as the token's price went from being worthless, which it always is, well, not always is, but it was dying to be, it became worth tens of thousands of dollars and it made many DeFi pundits extremely rich. As Wi-Fi's price rose, Blue Kirby became somewhat influential, which is always the truth, right? When somebody has a lot of money, they're like, oh, that guy must know what he's talking about. No, not all the time. Sometimes they're just scammers. The founder of Yearn, Wi-Fi's native platform, Andre Kronhey, spotted their efforts and donated $400,000 of Wi-Fi to the anonymous figure, but then it went wrong. 
On December 28th, Corona started testing a project called Eminence on the blockchain rather than doing it on a test net. Uh, the project was designed to provide an economy for the gaming industry. So if you don't know, Cronhey, he's built a lot of DeFi products and he doesn't believe in test nets. He just thinks, well, he believes that I'm going to build it and we're going to break it and then we'll fix it again. And whatever breaks then, we'll fix it again. And he's like, no, I'm not going to test net. Leave that to Ethereum. Let them deal with that nonsense. I'm just going to go balls to the wall and see what sticks. And uh, yeah, that's essentially what he what he did. And the problem is, is that too many things broke. So Blue Kirby reportedly promoted it, the project, Wi-Fi, while it was being tested, or sorry, Eminence, encouraging others to invest. The project was then hacked a day later with the hacker taking 15 million in the attack before returning half of them. What a nice guy or gal. This turn of events caused Blue Kirby to suffer a major blow to his rep in the Ethereum community. And then it talks about how he also got into rareable and non-fungible tokens. But what it really comes down to is that eventually Blue Kirby's anonymous identity was discovered. And October 4th, Blue Kirby left the Ethereum community entirely after deleting his Twitter account. He left with approximately 1 million, which Sasano, the guy who wrote the article, estimates came from selling Wi-Fi tokens and keeping Ethereum proceeds from the non-fungible token sales and off blue sales. So here's the whole point. There are some things you can come back from, but it doesn't seem like this will be one of them, said Sasano, adding that even if what Blue Kirby did was an honest mistake, and even if they originally had good intentions, they have probably hurt too many people and broken too much trust to be welcomed back with open arms. And that is the big thing. Trust is a currency you cannot buy. And when you build it up, uh, it can take uh, weeks, months, years, and it only takes seconds to destroy. So that's why on this channel, I try to only bring the most stable things that I can. I don't promote that many things. And like, if I, if I do, it's pretty safe, like a notebook, <laughs> uh, the uh, shield folio. That's not going to break anybody's bank. I mean, I love it. I got two of them myself. They're great. I also promoted a like crypto trader for taxes because I truly believe everybody needs to, you know, pay taxes. And you know, my uh, one, two, three punch on my uh, exchange fees spreadsheet, uh, Kraken, Celsius, and Voyager, and you know, some other things. But I mean, they're all things that I use. I have money in. I have skin in the game. So it's just one of those things where you got to be careful in this industry, uh, especially with all everything that, that's that's going on. If you noticed when the DeFi was go crave was going on, I didn't do too many videos. Not because I thought it was bad or evil. I just didn't. I didn't really see how it could be uh, sustainable. And I know there's other people talking about it, and that's fine. They can do whatever they want to. But um, here, I'm a little bit more conservative, a little bit more reserved. I said the same thing from day one. I'm not a trader. I don't do TA. I just dollar cost average. I invest, and uh, I try to have the strongest hands I can possibly have. Keep everything with that uh, tight kung fu grip as best as possible. And that's it. I mean, that's pretty much, it's a very boring concept, but seems to work out for a lot of investors like Warren Buffett and those types of people. So I'm going to do that. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on to uh, Q of the day. All right, everybody, welcome back to the office. So uh, today, this is a pretty good Q of the day. And uh, this is from Susie. And she states, uh, hello, Dan. I watch you on YouTube. Love your content. Thanks. Appreciate it. And straightforward style. I'm new to the crypto world, but I've dipped my investment toes into Bitcoin and a few altcoins. I'm interested in purchasing some Celsius, one of my favorite projects out there, as well, but cannot find on the exchanges I'm currently using. Can you please tell me what exchange or how I can go about purchasing in the U.S., please? It says you can purchase it through the Sell app, but I'm hesitant to do that. It seems risky to me. I purchase on Coinbase and Binance and Kraken and places like that. So, uh, pretty good question. And... Um, I'll just answer with this. If you don't live in the United States, or I'm not actually 100% for sure, I think maybe some states can buy Celsius uh, on the app. I'm not 100%, so you can fact check me. But uh, if, you, if you can, uh, definitely buy it on the app. It's very safe. Uh, they have a lot of uh, good safeguards in place. And uh, I've used the app and I actually have 30% you know, of my entire portfolio uh, uh, in Celsius, not in the in the token itself, but on the actual platform. So um, I would trust it to actually buy the Celsius token. However, uh, I don't have that much Celsius token in general because, well, I can't buy it. And even though my rewards, you know, I'm getting a pretty uh, good amount as far as the interest on different uh, cryptocurrencies and digital assets that I have, uh, I cannot earn in Celsius because I live in Texas. So that's a bummer. However, there's a way around it, and it's called a decentralized exchange. 
uh, like Uniswap and SimpleSwap and places like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into my phone, um, into my computer, excuse me, and we're gonna take a look at how you can buy Celsius uh, just by you know setting up a couple of different things. And it's pretty fast and uh, super simple. So let's jump right in. So to find the Celsius token, the best place, well, actually one of the few places actually for me is Uniswap. And it works out pretty well, pretty fast. Everything works out pretty uh, simply and smooth. If you don't know, I use the Brave browser. It's fantastic. And the reason I'm talking about Brave browser right now is because I have my wallet connected to Brave. So all you gotta do, if you don't know already, is in Brave, if you just click on the, the Brave icon, the very top left, you can't see it right here, but uh, you click on Brave and go to Preferences. Under Preferences, here's all the different settings for the Brave browser. And over here it says Crypto Wallets. So under Crypto Wallets, you can set everything up and have your Ethereum basic attention token. I have a little bit of cells. I have a whopping 35 cell. Wow. And then 10 USDC. And all if you want to send it, or actually what I do is I just send Ethereum. I just copy that address. And the, the easy way would be to, be to go to Coinbase, ship over a little of Ethereum like I've done here. And then, then that way you have it uh, to spend. So now that you have it open, we're just going to go back to Uniswap. And now you have it connected. See, it's already connected right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Ethereum, which I have four Ethereum right now. It's a lot. Shouldn't really I shouldn't really have that much in there. But yeah, that I do. And let's take, oh, I don't know, 0 0.10 Ethereum. And what I want, we're going to select a token and just go to Celsius. And I could pick up a whopping 29 cell, which, eh, maybe we'll go a little bit, a little bit ballerish. So that's about, I don't know, 63, 65 bucks. Let's try for... That's about a, that's about a hundred dollars worth of sell right there, give or take. So all I'm going to do, is I'm going to click on swap and go. Just be aware, output is estimated. You'll receive at least eighty-seven, or the transaction will revert. So sure, liquidity fee. Oh, not too bad. Point zero 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 nine, which is a great time to do this. Before it was like way higher. Uh, price impact. Sure, I'm going to receive eighty-seven, and the price was roughly. Let's flip that around. Point zero zero three ETH or two hundred ninety-two. Let's confirm this swap, waiting for confirmation. And then here's where all the action happens. So, oh, sorry, it's about $113, excuse me. So the gas fee, you're gonna pay a whopping uh, $1.70. I'm gonna get $113 worth of Celsius and I need to confirm that action. Transaction submitted, view on either scan. So we're gonna wait and uh, hopefully it all goes through. Now nah, it'll go through. And there we are. And uh, that's all the sell. And actually took like uh, three minutes, three to five minutes. That's uh, pretty good. So I've got a whopping 123 sell. Cost a little bit of Ethereum. I think I made a good choice there. And uh, yeah, that is it. Now, if you're looking for the direct link or which exchange to use, always, always try to get it from a direct link. And I have the exchange and wallet fees. There is a link in the description of every one of my videos. It looks like this. This will take you to just a basic spreadsheet about what is going on as far as all the different exchanges and wallets, how much you have to charge. And so we'll just uh, go over here. And just so you know, uh, there's these are all affiliate links, or at least most of them. So you can go, if you wanna sign up for any of these, uh, after you check out the uh, rates and all the different things, uh, you can use this, but it's an affiliate link. Uh, you can get between 10 and $25. Uh, when you just sign up, but you don't have to use it. You can go right to Voyager, right to Gemini, right to Binance, whatever, uh, just that you won't get the reward. So what I'm looking for here is Uniswap, and I'll look, let's click on this, and that is the direct link to go right to it. But uh, if you're looking for the correct one, uh, there it is. Now be careful because there have been scams out there where they just change a couple of letters or uniswap.com or something like that. I I'm not even for sure, but I know there's been people who've been scamming their money because they are taken to the wrong Uniswap and they put the wrong information in, and then boom, leads to a big disaster. So go ahead and, and uh, go for that. All right, so that's it. You know, easy peasy, super simple. Uh, so go ahead and give that a give that a shot. I do think um, I do think Celsius is going to go pretty far. Uh, like I said, I like the exchange or I like the uh, platform. Uh, I like Alex Mashinsky, uh, the uh, CEO and the founder. I like what he's doing over there. And he's got a pretty good saying. Uh, he says, "Do good, then do well." And I think the interest rate that he's giving back to uh, all the people that have invested. Uh, their cryptocurrency and trusted on that platform is pretty great. I mean, if you can get anything anywhere from, you know, on the low end, 4%, all the way up to sometimes, you know, 18, 
I mean, try doing that in the bank. It just does not happen. So uh, that is it. Uh, go ahead and uh, you know, review that video if you need to. And uh, that is it for this section. All right, so that's it. So thanks for sticking with me to the very end. Really appreciate it. If you don't know, I got a second channel. It's called Digital Asset News Clips. And I made this for two reasons. Uh, first reason is sometimes I talk a little bit too much. So I want to break up just the clips of each section so you can go and watch them. And you know, like five to seven minutes and they're not too long and I don't, I don't uh, take too much of your time. Second reason is it's a backup because you never know what uh, YouTube could do to this channel. So hey, that's one of them. And I have this channel as a backup and also I have my backup channel over at Theta. If you haven't checked it out, I do a lot of live streams these days, which is really fun because you get to you know interact with people and answer questions. So uh, check me out there. I usually do it in the mornings. Uh, I try to do it every day and I uh, just do it. There is a link in uh, the description of every one of my videos uh, for my Theta channel. So uh, that is it. So thanks for sticking with me to the very end. Appreciate it. If you like those types of videos, there'll be two more that's going to pop up on your left and right. And uh, just check those out when you got time. And uh, that's it for today. Thanks so much. See you on the next one.